Hey, brother, how you doing? Oh, hey, John, how are you? Good, thanks, bud. Good. Um, I think there was a... Oh, hang on, I'm not on the fucking video. I think Here it was my fault anyway, by the way. No, you're good, bro. You're good. You're good. Um, let me just text Dave because uh, he'll need to sit in. Um, so I, I got the message saying, you know, hey, look, you know, give, give him a call, 10 o'clock. I was like, all right, not a problem, bank. 10 o'clock, set everything up for 10 o'clock. And then I just ignored it. And then I looked underneath and it's gone, that's locked in for 10 a.m. A-E-S-T. And I only just saw it now because I mean, Adelaide. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're chill, bro. I do shit like that all the time, man. I've missed flights because of that and all kinds of shit. Yeah, I'm I'm terrible with that. Oh, what a start, man. What a start. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll try and be professional from this point onwards. No, you're chill, bro. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's crack on because I've already lost fucking 10 minutes. Um, all right, so... I don't, uh, I don't have another one after this, man, so we can go over and, and um, take your time. I don't have one until like I think like eleven or some shit. So we we good. I, I suppose like um, I was thinking this like today. Like when you guys do these press junkets things, do you just get asked the same fucking questions over and over again? Yeah, you know it depends. Sometimes we get like sometimes I get if if you get interviewed by like a like a genuine fan. That's they're normally really fun because like they have like pretty intense detailed questions to ask you, but then that's not so great because like it's fun funner to do, but also like half the people if they're reading it are like, what the fuck are they talking about? You know what I mean? Like it's it's too too in depth. And then sometimes you get like um like like in America, sometimes you get like college radio people and they're like, so how'd you get the name of your band? And you're like, oh, fuck, you know, here we go. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's their first interview and you're like, well, you know, cool. Like, let's try and let's try and do something fun. And but um, and you then, yeah, some women, no, I'm, I'm not like I always just feel like if someone's having a hard time or, or, or asking the same shitty question, I don't, I don't know. I just try and I try and make it better trying to answer it in a different way or like tell a, tell a cool story behind it. Cause I just like, I, I'm wary of, of like, they're doing it for like a mark or something maybe, mm -hmm. or, or their new job. And it's like um, taking the piss out of somebody on their first day at Macca's, you know what I mean? Like they're just there <laughs> working. So uh, like, yeah, I, 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 I've got a bit of a soft spot for people doing press. Cause it, it must be hard, man. One-on-one -on -one call with like, you know, when you're doing your job and you've got to think like, oh, am I doing the right thing? And must be a lot yeah. to juggle, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I mean, I don't do this full time. I haven't, but my, I actually have a day gig. Like a lot of people have a day gig and then you do this as kind of like on the side. So I, I yeah. Do, and what I try and do, like I've, I try and do it as a fan, but also as, as, a, as a journal. So I try and do half and half. Like I want to find something really quirky and something fun. But at the same time, yeah. I know at some point I've got to sit there and go, tell us about your tour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the last album. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's going to yeah, happen. It. Yeah, well, I think that's it, right? Like uh, the uh, balance is key, you know? It's, it's about working those things out. But I don't, like, I, I, I don't mind talking about all of it. It's just I'm terrible with dates, so I've actually I've got a, I'm in my studio right now. I've got a whiteboard behind my Mac. And it's got Brisbane Friday, 23rd August. I've got the fucking the dates down. Where am I? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So it just looks like I'm thinking because I've got my eyes up, but uh, but no, I'm actually reading the, oh, the prompts on the back. Well, nice segue to the tour. And I'm gonna throw yeah. one in. I'm sure you've probably been hammered because I'm gonna I'm gonna go down a bit of a rabbit hole with you in a few moments. Um no Perth. No Perth, no. And he's made um, a comment about that on social media. So what was the story? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, I gotta remember like the the internet. Um, every everything is like can be taken out of context. You know what I mean? And like everything is received how how that person is receiving it at that point in their day, you know, like context of that person in that point of their life, you know, they might have a shitty day at work in Perth, 
And they read that stupid comment that I was like, no excuses, no perth with the rude finger emoji. And they've seen that and they're like, fuck this guy, you know, like it, it's not our fault we live all the way out here. And you're right, man, but it's just a, it's just a joke, you know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> I felt so bad because some people took it pretty pretty hard. And I and it's just like, man, you can't take it serious. Like I never I've never said anything serious online in my life unless it's like, you know, about about a friend of mine or a post or, or, or like a like a nice photo or something that like yeah it was just a joke but honestly like i'd love to play perth I'd, I'd love to play it a lot more but um the thing oh. is it's like you, you have a budget for the tour and um you know it costs x amount to bring out um uh uh international band for main support and um in Australia and nowhere else in the world, by the way, but in Australia, you have to pay like their everything that they, all their expenses need to be paid for by the headliner band. So before they even get their money for playing, they have to be, you've got to, you've got to spend like their tickets over. And then we'd have to fly into Perth. Cause imagine being like, okay, we're going to fly. We're going to fly you from the UK a week early and then you drive across the Nullarbor to Perth and we'll play there for one night and then you drive back and, and then the tour starts on the East Coast. Yeah. It's just insane. But then buying them all flights and accommodation and, and all that kind of stuff and like, it's just, and, and for the science rooms we play over there because the population is smaller, you've got to, you've got to think as well, like if, if the if if twenty percent of all of Perth's population likes punk rock, and then that's already a tiny number, and then maybe one percent of that twenty percent knows who we are, and then half that one percent of people that go to shows, or one third of that one percent of people that go to shows, and it's like it turns out to be like two hundred people. You know what I mean? Mm. And then it's like, all right, fuck, what do we? It, it just it, it's going to break the bank just going there. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, it's a pain in the ass, man. And it's one thing that like, you know, I don't, I don't want to wait. I don't want to bore people, fans in, in Perth about explaining all that bullshit to them, you know, because yeah. in the, at the end of the day, they don't care. They're just kind of like, well, why no show? And unfortunately that's the, that's, um that's how the cookie crumbles, man. I'd love to play there, but too far. yeah, it's just uh, one day you know, when we're, when we're, when we're Justin Bieber big, I'll, I'll, I'll do a fucking, what do they call that thing in Vegas where they just lock in? The, residency. I'll do a residency in Perth, 365 days of the year, for one year. I'll play there every day. I, look, Adelaide cops are a similar thing. Like, we get the, um, like, you know, why no Adelaide and this and that, and it's the same thing. And, like, I also know that uh, from having chats with other people previously, that even coming to Adelaide, if you sell out, you might not necessarily be making any money. So really you're doing it as a labor of love to come to, to South Australia. And I, th I don't think people here kind of understand that either. So it's like, because Australia is just so expensive to get around. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to drive, then you, and, and um, especially if you, if you're cutting around production, mm -hmm. um, you know, that like, that's, that's, that's 10 hour drives of like a semi trailer truck with all the gear in it. And then you've got to hire a driver and then a crew to unload it and all that kind of stuff. And before you know it, you're paying like teams of people to kind of go into state and um, yeah, it just, it adds up so fast, man. But I feel like, you know, um, the, the whole, the whole tour, probably every tour in my in my career so far and my decade of playing to shows has been a labor of love there's really been no like <laughs> i feel like the world thinks that like oh shit they're they're in a rock band that i've seen on instagram they must be rich and it's like no man <laughs> no not at all um it's all it's all a labor of love all of us have have day jobs and um yeah, it's just how can we make it? How can we make it work with what we have? That's kind of yeah, that's the puzzle. Every every tour. So on that, actually, talk about the tour now. Okay, so on that, you obviously got Boston Manor in. So they're over yep. here. You do four shows with them. Then you guys head off over to Europe, and you're going to be doing shows with them. 
So it's kind of like mm-hmm. the, the duality going in there. I mean, uh, how did that come about with that particular band? Well, um, we've known them for a long time, um, probably like 2016. Okay. I think we met for the first time on a tour in the US with Moose Blood and another band that was opening called Will Away, which is probably one of my favorite rock bands. They were fucking incredible. I remember every night we'd be like, all of the bands would be watching that opening band. And it would be like me, Eddie, the singer, and uh, Henry, the singer of Boston Manor, watching this band play being like, fuck, I can't believe I have to go on after them. They were, they were so good. It was crazy. They had like every band being like, ah, oh, shit. Um, but anyway, we met on that on that tour and then just as fate would have it, we kind of ended up on the same circuits for the best part of a year, I think. Um, and, you know, you kind of, in in back then, touring wasn't as easy as we have it now. So it, it's kind of like a, sh- a shared trauma bonding experience, I guess. And we just became best mates. Um, and, yeah, you know, we did walk tour together and... Um, and we just stayed in touch and stayed really, really good friends for a very long time. So um, good. I'm trying to make this happen, trying to get back together and try to tour again. And um, and we finally made it work. Um, yeah, we had we had the like it was time for us to do a bigger rooms here and kind of get now that there's been some momentum back in Trophy Eyes and um, you know the effects of COVID seem like a like a bad dream kind of thing. It feels like everything's moved on. We're like, okay, let's kind of start where we left off, and we, uh, yeah, have the ability now to bring out um, an international band. So it was a no brainer for us. It was like, let's get the boys, and um, I think that was reciprocated. They were like, let's let's do the same thing in the UK, and we're all way too happy to oblige. Awesome, awesome. And um, you mentioned there about the COVID. The, the obviously that stopped an awful lot of everything really. Then you guys came out of that with Suicide and Sunshine. And I know this is a question you've been asked a million times. It's one of them questions. Um, right. And then obviously now you, you, you're touring that and, and such forth. There was the suggestion at the time that that COVID and therefore that album was going to be kind of a, uh, I'm not going to say final nail in the coffin, but almost like that's it. That's, that, that's that book closed. But obviously, there's yep. been a success since then. I mean, you, where your plane's literally across the road from where I'm at the moment, uh, when you were here in Adelaide. So mm-hmm. has that give you renewed vigour for then, this actually is the new chapter that we're in moving forward? Yeah, absolutely, man. I feel like um, during during that time, like it was, it was pretty dark. And there was that one call where we all, all kind of got together and said, um, you know, the we kind of evaluated everything. We looked at it and we were like, this really isn't bringing us any joy anymore. Like every day we wake up and we, our accountant kind of gives us a call and he's like, it's not looking good boys. And you kind of start your day like that. And you're like, fuck. And then you, you use social media and you see all of your mates, you know, back to it and touring the U S and, and, uh, and whatever. And you kind of just go like, fuck, we're ruined, man. Like there's nothing we can do. And it was so much time between, which we kind of coined it, but so much time between sips that we kind of started our own lives again. And there was a lot of like learning who you are without music and living without the guys in your fucking back pocket for one, you know what I mean? And like um, being at home and not moving and like being stationary. And that was, you know, we, we all became different people again. And, and it was just like, Oh fuck, it's too hard to, it's like starting the Lord of the Rings trilogy. You know what I mean? Like you've seen it and you're like, fuck, am I going to do this? You know what I mean? That's like nine hours. <laughs> and then, yeah. Right. And then, and then it kind of felt like that again. I'm like, we're going to climb this fucking hill again. And then we were like, let's just, let's call it, say a goodbye to the fans, go in there, leave no stone unturned, like fulfill our own wants. And, um, and lay it all out there and just say, thanks. You know what I mean? And because we can't go out, how like without without saying something you know because it means so much to people it meant so much to us you know so we got in there we did the album and we kind of were doing well writing together in sessions and like playing live and kind of it just kind of sparked that like oh yeah like that 
like I forgot this is like magic you know what I mean this is something this is something incredible like what the fuck else would I do with my life you know and um and that feeling just kind of carried through it was just like yeah let's let's all let's try again and yeah I definitely like you know playing these rooms again that it's I'm reinvigorated but I'm also um I have different expectations and like different wants out of what what music was giving me now and before you know it was very transactional and it was like bigger better play more do more and now I'm just very very happy to see the boys for practice whereas before you know I'd be like oh, 6 a.m flight like what the fuck and now I'm like oh I get to wake up jump on a plane go to Sydney see the lads get creative like it's totally rearranged my my mind and my outlook on, on everything. So yeah, I, it's, it's lit a fire under us. And I don't think, um, you know, I don't think the end is as, is as close as we once thought at all. In fact, uh, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's an option for us at the moment. Good. Good. Do you think, cause you've, you've been doing some solo stuff as well. And uh, you've also been working on other people's records. Like I interviewed Lachlan about a month ago when you, because you worked on the Run EP, do you think yep. then being able to go out and do them sort of things, your solo stuff, and working with other uh, uh, artists, do you think that has also helped balance out um, the the grind, I suppose, of what could be in the band? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does, man. It, it's um, I like to. It's probably a terrible way to, to to approach songwriting and and anything creative, but it's like a puzzle to me. It's like a it's like a crossword or a jigsaw or something. Like you've got all these things, and it's just a um, uh, um it's just a process of making them all fit and work, and you, you know, using the tools that you have in your head or that you've learned with experience and stuff like that, and doing those other doing those other projects. Um, usually means using a part of my of my skill set in a different way that I haven't ever done before. And I always come away with that with something that I can apply to um you know what I do, be it my solo stuff or, or trophy eyes. So I look forward to those things, man. I really do. And I I love to kind of challenge and do something new. In fact, doing the same thing twice bores me to death. I'd honestly rather die. So like and that's why Trophy Eyes sounds like it does. Like there's no each album sounds like a different band, you know what I mean? So I feel like um it really does help take uh if you could consider any part of like writing writing music mundane, it does help. It does it does kind of um quench that, you know. I do, I do get to use my my mind in different ways and help people write lyrics or sometimes riffs or um or you know, compose a song. I put a song together and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's I love doing that shit, man. I love it, especially like with friends. Um, that's always super fun. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, I'm going to go back to a point that we made at the very beginning, which was social media. So you know how we mentioned, you know, we mentioned at the beginning, like I, I like to sometimes like you know, boring questions and then other stuff. What I tend to do is before I give. Before I interview somebody, I'll go through their social media and go, there's got to be something in here. And you gave up on Twitter about eight months ago, apparently. You just yeah. gave, you just walked off. And I kind of got the impression, a little bit like you were saying beginning, it was kind of like, I'm just fucking done. I'm just done with people on there. Like, yeah. it, seems, it seems that you like you almost have a hate-hate relationship with it because obviously I see your Instagram, right, and you put your random shit on there. So do you <laughs> do you think it's a random photo dump? Do you see yeah. a necessary evil or is it something that you can use to create your, your next piece of art? Yeah, man. You know, there's so many different ways of looking at it. And I do believe inherently that like social media is bad. It's bad through and through it's made people into goblins dude and mm -hmm. twitter is just a fucking cesspool it is disgusting on there like the type of people the things they say the casual racism the 
just the pure hatred that you find on there just by scrolling man like it's not even like yeah i can't believe there's a space like that where people can just behave like that anonymously you know it's i do hate social media but then again like you kind of i do love the chaos i do love like it's fucking insane that it exists and that people are on there doing this like there is a part of me that goes like wow you know like look at this spectacle um you know so it's but yeah mostly i think it's not for me i feel like um i'm much more interested in like um just living life and like subtle beauty of this is going to sound fucking ridiculous but just i, I just like to sit in the park and and you know watch the leaves blow and that's 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 beautiful that i could do that for, for the whole day but yeah i do think that instagram and all of these things it's another outlet to be creative and um another another um another way to express yourself um and i do use it as that you know what i mean and i've kind of detached myself from like the the this many likes means it's this good and kind of like the transactional feeling of social media but i do use instagram as a medium of just kind of like um showing points in my life and and things that i've found and i try and keep them as chaotic as possible and yeah so i thought yeah i do use instagram as like another outlet for creativity and that's kind of how i view it and um it's easy to kind of look at that yourself and be like oh my god i've created a shrine to myself like this is fucking this is ridiculous and but then also it's like it's it's not so much that for me it's more um it's more giving those things that I keep and squirrel away somewhere to live instead of just on my phone, just for me, it's another way of expressing myself, I think, but it is. Yeah. I think, and I'm not sure if that answered your question. I think it's been kind of blabbing, but there's a lot in there. It is a necessary evil. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 It, it, I, I agree. It's a necessary evil to kind of, um, to, to exist nowadays as a business, as a band, you need to do it. And, um, you know, labels are the, uh, are the first kind of people to be like, make some TikToks, you know, like call your friend uh, in another band and talk about your song. You're like, yeah, they were going to love to do that, bro. That's a great idea. And like, so it's, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a necessary evil, but one that I, I'm yet to um, kind of delve into. Master, yeah, 100%. Or even fucking try mastering. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I just turned too old when it became like ultra important. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just turned like, I turned like I 31. <laughs> yeah. And then like, I woke up one day and everyone was just like, holy fuck, man, you've got to make reels and you've got to make TikTok content and you've got to be out there and, and just hammering out content. And I was like, damn, I'd rather read a book. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> not really like an internet, like not really like a camera person, but yeah. Well, I don't know. I've got I've got a multitude of thoughts of uh, on social media. Sorry, just kind of fired them all at you then. No, that's fine. That's fine. And then, hey, look, and then that's the basis of the next album. I'm happy to be here at the genesis of that. So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just put it in put it in the liner notes. This guy did this. Um, uh, one yeah. of the other, going, <laughs> to, going up to another boring question. Um, so, what can we expect from the tour? Yeah. So the, this tour. Um, as opposed to any other tour, you know, it's going to be, I wanted to do, I wanted to focus on what we're good at and what keeps, what has kept us a band for so long, I think, and what means so much to people. And and to me, kind of breaking down and going through this process, like they genuinely did this, like kind of breaking down what the fundamentals of Trophy Eyes are and what the, what the foundations are and kind of what, if you took everything away, what would be left that could keep it moving? You know what I mean? What is the skeleton? What is the bare bones of what it is? And I think it's like, it's uh, raw energy and um, honest emotion. And I think that we want to focus on that. I think, um, you know, you can do, and we have, you know, we've done pyro and we've done fucking confetti cannons and all kinds of dumb shit and and i've 
in a way, you can't really polish a turd. You know what I mean? We're a punk band. You know what I mean? And like, like, and we're not even that fucking good. And I feel like that's putting makeup on a pig, you know? And, yeah. and we kind of broke it down a little bit. And we're like, what is it that we can do? You know what I mean? Like, how do we kind of look ourselves out here and really deliver something that's heartfelt and honest and new and fresh? And so we've been kind of like working on moments and um, finding like what moments mean the most to us in songs and kind of um, accent accenting them and, and focusing on them and putting a little bit more energy into that and kind of relaying that with our, our um, production person who's doing the lights. And we're really going to kind of like try and make moments and just create this like Base of uh, emotional catharsis we can like everybody can just kind of like feel this super dramatic over the top versions of these songs but still in a live way you know and um make it a lot more about the music than than pretty sparkles nice nice mm. well, i have that's technically 20 odd minutes and i know you see you have another one i can see dave's in the background there so um what we'll do, it, <laughs> we will call it quits uh, I'll, I'll be at the show. I think you're here 30th of August, literally across the road. So I'll see you guys when you get here. And uh, thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much for bearing with me because it was all my fuck up at the beginning. So thank uh, you. you're good, brother. Appreciate you very much. Yeah, yeah. I'll um, yeah. Hopefully see you at the at the Adelaide show. Excellent. Thanks for your time, John. Take care. Pleasure to meet you, mate. Bye bye.